CD Lamb sitting down with us here on Sean and RJ, 105.3 The Fan. I heard you uh, called Dak old today. Absolutely. <laughs> as soon as you hit that 30 threshold, best believe I'm coming. Oh, okay. That arm wasn't old. He was overshooting everybody by about half a mile. He, had, he, he had a kid's arm today. As he should. I saw him make some nice throws today. Yeah. I see him make nice throws every day. Okay. But that kind of be underappreciated. It's all right. That's yeah. A, that's a story. For so me. I want to ask you. I, I do want to ask you because – Everyone just says leadership, leadership, leadership. Tell the, tell the audience, tell us some football traits slash intangibles about his game versus everyone just talking about his leadership as a quarterback. An ultimate leader, of course. Um, but besides that, man, he's a great he's a great teammate. Um, he's very aggressive, uh, and the way he wants to win. I mean, that's everybody, and he's looking for he's looking for the deep ball now. And uh, man, as you see today is up there so if you're not gonna back up this is a warning to everybody if you're not gonna back up good luck Ooh, i like it what are some of the changes to the offense with mike versus kellen uh really not much honestly just you know the way different play calling of course but uh it's just it's, it's a lot more simpler you know all the offense is in dax hands now um it's not necessarily you know being called from Mike or Kel mm -hmm. since last year, but now it's all in, it's all on deck. Like higher V's filling versus the coverage. If he like the matchup, we're gonna call that play. If he likes whatever he likes versus zone, he's gonna call that play. So technically, it's all in Dak's hands, and um, yeah, and we moving much faster at a different pace, and just the ability to go out there and play freely is, I mean. You can see it as fun. So are the amount of changes he's making to the plays, like, you know, like, let's say he gets a play in now at the line of scrimmage, are, are there more changes that he's making this year, it seems like, so far in practice than in previous years? Absolutely. Way more. Um, and I've been – well, this is going on my fourth year. But, like, the past three, this is the most in control of the offense that I've seen Dak. I mean, obviously he can make a lot more changes. But going into the line of scrimmage, us as receivers, we know the other two or three options that he has to change to. So – I mean, with that, I feel like that opens up the game, that opens up Dak's mind, and he doesn't feel so close, closed off of just predicated to that one play that's being called. So, I mean, granted the defense could give us a man coverage and we call it a zone play, it's obviously not going to work, mm -hmm. right? So now that he has the opportunity to go to, from man to zone, back to man, I mean, it could go either way. You know, so uh, just the ability to, you know, read the defense, read the coverage, and then see what he likes versus the defense, I mean, it's really Dak versus the D coordinator. We heard a lot about, uh, you know, end of last season, end of this off season. A lot of you guys, a lot of the coaches have talked about communication. That, hey, the communication's got to be better. Sometimes when there were interceptions last year or there was trouble, it was issues with communication. Mm -hmm. I think that sounds, to, to fans out there, it sounds a little broad, and they don't know, okay, what does that mean? Communication in terms of you guys need to talk to each other more. You guys have to have a better sense for, for which way you want to go. When you hear that, that we need to improve our communication, what does that mean specifically to you? Communication can mean anything, right? But in, as far as the terms of football, it's verbal and nonverbal. He could switch a play without even saying anything. So, therefore, nobody knows what's going on. So, he could be checking the protection but also talking to us. So, therefore, it would change our route to a different, you know, angle or, or you know, just change the whole play. And I feel like we we were lacking a lot of that last year. Granted that we we were we were high on the communication, but it is definitely instilled in this offense, instilled on this team. And uh, we've been working on communication since San Fran, right? So uh, mm -hmm. just being big on that, being on the same page is probably the most important thing in the NFL because everybody's good, everybody's talented, everybody makes plays. The like what the only edge that you can't have is being on the same page and having a crazy timing. And timing beats anything. C.D. Lamb sitting down with us here on 105.3 The Fan. Did you uh, get him something for his birthday? Nah, I didn't. Don't <laughs> but you I got, take... a, I got a cake for him. Don't tell him yeah. I said that. Though. Okay. You got <laughs> what a kind? What, what kind? What kind? Ice cream oh, cake? Oh, no. It's going on his face anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think as, you know, the number one receiver, you know, you want to keep maintain that status by getting him a legit gift? Mm, we're going to dinner tonight. Oh. I didn't want to tell nobody, but. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you're, so, so, good. You're treat on that. Now, how's Gilmore lining up against him? What's the, what's the early read on Stefan? Love it. Love we it. We saw him uh, last night at dinner. Solo. Solo. Which we've never seen. He might be a solo type guy. Nah, he's definitely a, a team guy, but he's more, you could tell, like, he's more of an older, you know, vet. He's a vet at, like, that's, you know, he's 32 years old. I just found that out. <laughs> Man, uh, you, you, I can't wait. You're going to hit 31 yeah, day. Hit 30. <laughs> what, what age do you start considering old, old? 
What, how old are you right now? 24. Okay, so is it like 27? <laughs> I got some years before I hit 37. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are you gonna? Free, some people freak out at the 25 mark. No, indeed. Okay. So no, you're sir. good till what age when you're just going to start thinking that you're, you're 29. Eight? 29. <laughs> right before 30. Yeah, I, then I'll start thinking about like, <laughs> yo, I remember when I was your age or, you know, uh, but – just as far as being a vet, he 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 checks off all marks. Him and B Cooks, they came in together. Them boys are boys. But as far as when we in, in between those white lines, it's different. And uh, today we're we're going at it a little bit, just talking trash, just you know, getting the best of each other. But love the way he competes, man. It's just he he pushes the limit, and he doesn't really do too much. You know, uh, very smart, very intelligent. He reads offenses like no other. Uh, Tricky, tricky guy to get, you know. I must say, but uh, I'm gonna I'm get him. I'm gonna get him. <laughs> when you guys added Brandon Cooks this off season. Obviously, he brings a a speed element that is rare across the NFL. Has been rare here in Dallas for several years. Uh, when you look at the receiving court that you guys have here, adding Cooks, MG back after a year, Jalen Tolbert getting another year to uh, you know kind of find himself in this offense. How do you feel your receiving core stacks up uh, among the other teams in the NFL? I must say I, I like my guys. Obviously, there's there's great there's great trios out there. Like I like the Bengals, of course. And then you got the Eagles, Chargers, you know. But uh, we're definitely alongside them boys, and it, I feel like the only way for us to prove it is to go out there and show it. So I wouldn't really compare us to anybody, you know. We're gonna let the numbers do the talking, and as far as the production, we got a lot of that. You know, the potential's there. Uh, you see it day in and day out, but. You could do a lot of talking, but come September is where everything really do, you know. I mean, it stands out to us, but, you know, we're we're observers and things. But the Brandon well, Cook's uh, speed yeah. and, and the way that he goes, does that stand out to you guys the same way it does to us? Do you guys yes. sit there and just marvel at, like, my yes. goodness, this guy's so fast? I love fast people. You know, I love watching fast people run fast. You know, so uh, every time, like, obviously, unfortunately, I'm on the field with him. Not really unfortunate, but uh, – like that post route that Dak threw to him today, um, he put a little too much on it. But just to just to see him just float past guys, Ooh. you know, when the ball's in the air, it's it's amazing, man. And you don't really see that too many too many times in a player or in a receiver, especially of his stature. And then at the year that he's in, he's in year ten, still flying by guys. So that speaks on his you know his prep and the ability to take care of his body. Um, yeah, he's a great receiver, bro. Who else in the league or in college for the first time when you saw their speed, you were like, whoa. <laughs> Hollywood Brown mm. and Jeff Bidette. When I tell you those two guys were blazing, <laughs> it was crazy. Like <laughs> I've never seen two. I mean, they're both from Florida, of course. And I mm. said it's some in that Florida water, but those two guys. <laughs> I want to know what's in that. <laughs> man, listen, swamps, alligators, yeah. <laughs> snakes, snakes—all all you can think of. What is your teeth whitening? procedure that is amazing you gotta brush them two times a, a day that's it that's all you gotta do there's use, no like use cold none of that gel stuff or oh, those, no, those uv that. things i hate that mm -mm. <laughs> you didn't get them whitened i did a couple times okay but that was like yeah no no coffee no coffee i don't drink coffee at all nothing it stains your teeth it does hmm what about stop drinking coffee if you drink coffee? <laughs> we do, we do. We what do. about cig how many cigarettes a day? <laughs> <laughs> He's not a basketball player from yeah, Europe. Yeah. <laughs> Some All right, of I, them got handles though. Do you care? Yeah. Do you care more about your Madden or top one hundred ranking? Top one hundred. Okay, and do you know where you came in this year? Mm -mm. Okay, I don't think they've named you yet. Yeah. No, no, which is good. Which is to which is very 60, good. 70? Top no, they're about to start going top fifty. Top fifty. Is there an area where you would be satisfied, or no. was there one you know a, a a group where you're like that? I can't be this low. It's not an area where I'm satisfied at all until I'm at least top ten. Did you fill out the That's list yourself? Good. Did I fill it out? No, 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 I didn't. Why? I mean, I don't really, I don't care that much, right? <laughs> okay, but. but I love seeing those guys be nominated uh -huh. um, just off the hard work and dedication and the success they had in the season. So it's, it's always a treat to watch them boys, like see the list from 1 to 10 or 1 to 20, if you will. Uh, shows you the uh, really the standard of the NFL, uh, how hard you got to work. Some guys I know, some guys I don't know, but I'm very familiar with because I played against them. But you can see it, man, and it's, it's, it's huge congrats to whoever gets number one this year. They deserve it in top ten. I mean – Top 10, 
I, th I think most people have you in the top ten, though, right? No, that's, he, he's talking about not a Dan Orlovsky. He's talking about overall top ten. Overall, top overall top, 10. top ten. Yeah, he wants yeah, to be. Yeah, I'll work for it. Okay, I sound crazy. I hear you. But no, I'm no, good no. for it. Do you do you think there's a, a wideout who clearly stands out as one now? As one besides yourself, as one, one in the league, number the one. best. Oh, uh, I like Devontae Adams a lot. I yeah. love him. Uh, his game just he's perfected. He's perfected this position. Mm. As far as route running, releases, uh, the ability to be pressed, man, zone, whatever, the way he moves, is is fluid. How do you look at receivers and say, okay, this guy has got this talent, but he's in this system, or he's got that quarterback? I don't necessarily look at the system. I look at the receiver itself and his success. Like, what routes is he running? What defense is he seeing? What coverage is he seeing? How many guys are actually good corners that he's going against? Uh, all that really plays a factor because, I mean, us as as one receivers, we know the favorable matchups, right? Mm -hmm. But versus when you see another guy that's a top ten at the cornerback position, how are you going to perform? Right. You know, there was a, a lot of discussion, at least, you know, in the media and amongst the fans last year that, okay, Mari Cooper's gone now. CeeDee Lamb's stepping into this number one role. Is that something that – we overblow as a talking point in terms of having to step into a number one role, or is that a real mindset that you feel you had to step into and actually had to own a little bit? No, nah, that's a real mindset. Uh, it's a responsibility, in fact. Uh, just understanding, like, you are the focal point. You're going to be the focal point, and you have to know that you're going to see double and triple coverage and be okay with it. You have to be fine with being tugged a little extra more. You're going to get – you're not going to get as many calls. The game's going to be more physical for you. Guys are going to impact you in different ways rather than if it's just when you're walking back, bump you, or when you're running a route, bump you. Uh, all that plays a factor. But as far as going from, you know, this offense along with Cope uh, to not having him, I understood the situation, and I understood what role I was getting myself into. I always looked at myself as one. I've always been a one no matter what offense I've been in. And, man, I like to win. So I feel like by me just having the, main, the the mindset that I've already had, I always felt like a one. Did something click for you in the second half of last season in particular? Because that's when I felt like, in my mm -hmm. opinion, you answered the question of being a one in the second half and then producing with Cooper early on. Did you feel something click or anything different in the second half of the season? Because that seemed to silence any doubt. Uh, just start being more aggressive, being true to myself, doing what I love. Uh, at first, it was a bit tough. It was a bit rough. Obviously, not having Dak, and then working with Coop, and we had to. We it was just a change in my game. Uh, quite honestly, it was just uh, I was thinking a lot more. Uh, I was in my own head a lot more. But as far as when I got Dak back, it was just like, all right, you know what? You just got to go out there and do what you did. Do what got, do what got you here. Enjoy the game. As far as have as much fun as you had before you got to the league, before all this craziness was on your back, and just go out there and do what you love. And that's the mindset I have now. So just going out there, playing a the game that I love with the guys that I love and building this camaraderie, and I'm trying to go get a ring. C.D. Lamb here on The Fan. Correct our observation or our opinion, but we interviewed you really early on. And uh, Bobby's in the locker room every day. He's like, CD has gotten a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot better with these interviews. And you are a treat as an inter interview. Appreciate it. Uh, do you feel more comfortable in interviews, or you feel like you've been like this from the beginning, or are we way off? Because you're you're comfortable, you're willing to talk, mm -hmm. all of it's flowing and coming out. So yeah. that was a compliment. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, but I did go to school for communication. It got better. Oh. It got better, honestly. Uh, and just start being more relaxed, being more truthful, not really thinking about what I'm going to say, yeah. just answering the question for what it is. And, yeah, no, nah, uh, if football being truthful. If fo football ended today, your communications degree would take you to what? What would you want to do? I could be a broadcaster. Okay. I could be a broadcaster. So, like, analyst, a uh, game analyst in studio? I'd be in the studios. I'm not really – I watch from the studio. Okay. Do you have a – someone who you give major props to that's doing it now that you like? Or Not necessarily. I like all them guys. I learn from all of them. But Shaq and Charles are like, <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're the pinnacle of this broadcasting thing just because they're having fun doing it. I won't even watch the TNT games, and I go home like a loser, and I record inside. You should. And I just oh go to God. watch it back for that. But they have so much fun on there. Yeah. It's just like they're themselves. They're how yeah. I feel like the broadcasting 
the analyst mm-hmm. or the in the studio guys should be. You know, be relaxed. Explain the game. They're talking from experience yeah. also. And nine times out of ten, I mean, they're probably right. When <laughs> football I mean? guys are breaking down X's and O's on TV, are they normally, like, breaking it down correctly? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're yeah. not like, that's not what we're trying to do here. They're, they're, they're getting it right. Some, sometimes. Sometimes. And then sometimes they be way off. Really? Way off. Are they more off with, like, on the defensive side or, like, where the old line's you know, responsibilities are? Or they? I feel like our receivers? responsibility with receivers because also our, our position, it requires a lot of thinking as far as yeah. the way a defensive player play you, you got to run a route a certain type of way. You would never know. Or, like, the combinations of the route, you would think we were running the wrong route. Right. But it's – the whole time it was the right route. It was just a different – it was the wrong angle. How many you know, so. how many mm. steps or at what point in the route do you – do both of you know that you can make the decision to go inside, outside, vertical, change the route? By your third step. By your third step, you will, you will kind of – the defense will make sense. So this whole DAC intercept – that's the narr- that's the storyline right mm-hmm. now. What do you say to this whole DAC interception number narrative? A lot of – like if you look at it, a lot of us – a lot of it was on us as receivers, um, not being on the same page, you know, but the communication part, that's where it comes into play. Like, I feel like if we we're always on the same page, understand I will have to cross face on this play instead of taking a regular angle. Um, yeah, that, that's two picks right there that's taken away. And then some are tip passes, that, like, that can be completions. That's like four picks. So, Give us some excitement for another guy in the group. We're waiting for Gallup to bounce back. Tolbert has kind of been an early positive media focal Turt. point. Turt, uh, today. You Turt. see him dance to everyone today? Oh, I, I, uh, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I see it every day. But listen, Turp is the guy. Okay, I, we've, we have this fight over that Turpin can't get on the field because he's too small at receiving. Right? If he's the most dangerous dynamic guy, he can, he can get plays designed for exactly. him, right? Yeah, he will. He will. They just got to keep up with him. He's got the speed and the most freaks out here? He's crazy. His sticks are insane. Juke, he's very elusive. He's too explosive to not be on the field. And we all understand that. We took note of it as a team. And uh, you see him on special teams. He's breaking them 50 every time he touches the ball. Mm-hmm. So, so, What's been keeping him off the field, then? Honestly, I don't even know. But Kellen. We find out. Kellen. <laughs> Wow, look at that look. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else we should know about Kellen? I didn't say Kellen. Y'all said that. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. Oh, you looked he, at me. I was he, just joking. He gave a look. I was just playing. No, we, we don't know what the look is. So before we let you go, Paris in the off season Lit. W- was it? Definitely. Once in a lifetime experience. I never thought I would be in Paris for fashion week, but I love clothes. Like, I have a true ad- admirer for clothes. So how often do you get new clothes per month? <laughs> That's the weakness. <laughs> the real ones, no. But listen, I have new clothes every week. Wow, it sucks. It, it sucks. <laughs> You're holding your head in shame a little. Is but, it? Is it embarrassing? Yes, because I should. I know I should stop, but I can't. I love clothes. I mean, I don't spend crazy amounts on clothes. Like I don't just spend ten thousand a week, right? But every week, I'm definitely buying something new. Do you have a like a stylist? Yeah. So really? they're on the lookout, like. But it's like a mixture of my stylist and me. So like, <laughs> wow. she she send me something. She's actually out here in LA. But uh, yeah, no. Nah. And when I go to the mall, like I have a couple guys like send me some stuff. Like I can't obviously just walk in the mall and just chill and relax and just shop. But they'll send me a couple albums. I give them my number the one time I do. They'll send me their newest drops. Oh man! You, listen, you have extra like facilities for storage yet? Not yet. It's it, coming. It's coming. It's coming. Are you a hoarder? Like you're not getting rid of the old clothes? Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> you wear it once and then it's done? Or you re-wear Sometimes it? I, I rewear a majority of it, but it's something that I've worn once and I haven't worn it again. So more clothes than shoes, or shoes too? Shoes too. Mm. The whole outfit. I need the whole outfit. <laughs> CD Lamb wow. sitting down with us uh, Interview of camp so far uh, Congratulations on all the success man. You're a treat to have sit down with us CD Lamb it. soon to be Buying a lot more clothes Buying a lot more clothes Here so, on Sean and RJ And a storage unit And 105.3 The Fan